this chapter, we are going to deal with all things wings. I'm going to show you actual wings, the ones that I have. I'm going to show you some digital wings, either a brush version that I really love to use, or uh, ones that are actually created that you would put in. So we'll do three different types of wings to show you things you can do with wings. So this image is unedited. This is basically out of camera other than a little bit of sharpening and I played with the water, did a little bit of skin cleanup, but there's really nothing to it. This is just my studio. And um, on older girls, I find that the wings that I have, which are medium size, tend to be a little bit too small. And so I'm usually making them larger. I'm probably going to make myself a larger pair just so I don't have to keep doing this, but it's a perfect opportunity to show you how to enlarge wings or uh, sometimes they're, I'm getting better at paying attention to making sure my wings are not bent or anything when I'm actually shooting, but um, so these ones actually look fine, so we're just going to enlarge those, so I will show you how I do that pretty simply, and we will go from there, and then I will remove these wings to show you how to do that and how I would do brush wings or um, a digital file of um, some other kinds of wings. So if I want to make them bigger, um, simply a... Um, selection of those wings. Let me just actually flatten what I have here. I was just working with the water there. So I would, usually I duplicate my background layer, just so I like to have that original down there if I ever need to go back for whatever reason. And I usually just choose the uh, quick selection tool, and we're going to go zooping around these wings. Because they're against the dark, it's pretty simple. They'll select actually quite nicely. We can just Tidy up those edges in there if we need to a little bit. Go in a bit there. Bring that down here. Looks pretty good. There are wings on the other side of her. I probably won't worry about them over on that side, making them bigger, because with the angle, we can just pretend that that's where they were. So I'm just going to worry about making this side larger. So from that, I would copy paste that copy and paste to their own layer. So now we have their own layer. And firstly, I would just try transforming them, leaving leaving them where they are. I would try just going bigger like this. They are going to sort of move a little bit. And that's probably more the size that I'm going to want them. And actually that worked super well. Sometimes when you do that, you can see parts of the other wings underneath that you'll have to get rid of. Oh, actually, there is a little piece right here. So there's, I can show you getting rid of that. Sometimes I'll, if there's a piece showing that is, works to add like a fourth wing in there, I'll just do it. I'll just leave it. But in this case, we've got a little bit showing there. So you can either remove that with cloning. In this case, it probably would work well to clone just down that part that's showing. It was this piece right here that was showing. We can clone it. We can try a content fill. It may not work very well on a big piece like this, but let's just try a content aware fill and see what it does. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Um, let's just clone it out because I think that will be easier. And it doesn't really matter what it looks like because it's going to just, that's just kind of dark background underneath there. Just going to take out enough that it's not going to show. Just flick your wings back on. I can see that it's still there. And actually, now that we've eliminated a little bit, we might be able to use that content aware again. So let's just try if we grab that and content show. Nope, see that went backwards on me, so that's not going to work. So let's just keep cloning. And we can just continue to work on that layer with the clone stamp until we can't see them behind the wing there anymore. The thing is, we may move these, fiddle these wings around a little bit, so. I want to just make sure that we have enough of it removed. It's not going to cause any issue for us. Make sure we go down low enough. And once I know that they're low enough, I could then turn off that upper wing layer and go a little bit lower because we might move these wings around a little bit. So I know that it's not showing anymore. So now if I turn those off, you can see where they were coming out of her back here. They almost look like they're a little bit too high coming out of her back, so I might want to move them down a little bit anyway. You can see a little bit of the other piece of wing there, but I don't think that really matters. Let's move them and just see. I think I might want them kind of just nestled right in here. 
So now I see I've moved it lower. I've got more wings showing. So let's go in and clone out more of these. Nice when you just have a background like this, you don't have to, you know, it's just sort of shadowy back there right now. That's why I sometimes I haven't done anything to enhance or try to bring back any of that background there, so that kind of makes it easy to get rid of stuff. And you don't have to worry about making it look perfect. Let's actually get rid of a little bit of this part here. I'm going to have to do a bit of work there because now I've got duplicate um, leaf bits, so we'll just kind of shape a leaf down here. I'm just going to take the clone step and kind of make it look like those are gone. So I'm going to fix it. Okay. Just kind of look at what's beside and figure out what you need to do. So this leaf I may want to have showing more of kind of make it look like you're building the wing in there, the leaf in there. This looks a bit funny here too. I'm just going to grab a piece of this backdrop part there to fill those in a bit. And turn the wings back on. That'll be fine in there. You're not going to really notice what's going on. If we need to do more work with that after we can, I think that will work. The edge of these wings isn't quite perfect, so we can clean that up as well. But let's just get them positioned where we want them. So that's a much better size for her. Let's just back these out and just move them around and just see where they look best. So they were coming out of her back here. Which, do I like that better, lower, or higher? What do you think? If we put it right where they were, there's less work for us. I kind of feel like I want them lower. Let's just do it there. If we zoom in, I don't even think we have to do any work because they're going to match in there perfectly. Um, on YouTube, you'll there have a video about putting stuff behind other stuff and my little trick of if you need to slide something behind, like wings, which we may do, I can show you when I do the digital ones, where you copy a edge of the back or whatever that you're doing and then copy paste it to a new layer so you actually have a piece of this exactly on top of it and then these will just slide in and out behind you don't have to be masking it just maybe a little bit of touch up on it anyway that is how i will oh you see a little bit of tip here is from the other wing too so that would probably need to be removed or you could remove it actually looks kind of cool if i actually got rid of cloned out this piece of the wing line of there this could be like another little flare on the wing which could be kind of neat so i might just leave that let's have a look i would need to go in here and clone out this to just be wing a little fudging in there to make this look like it's the same edging not the top of a wing. This may need to be colored a little bit darker or brighter, as you can see. Down here, I need to, that's where the line is coming down, so we're going to grab some of this lighter color and just go over that. I need to bring some of this down a little bit and then bend it up in this direction as if that was the seam or the edges of my. Now we could also just color that in. If we just switch to a brush, grab this color. We can actually just paint that on now. It just has to look like it's the, the same edging. Good enough. Fix this edge. Oh, totally close enough. Look at that. This is the, there's little bits of fluff on here that we might want to clean up from the previous layer. Clone. Gone. Clone. Beauty. Okay. 
So there is those wings. Now you can see there's a little bit on here that perhaps could be fixed up. I would probably clone down, you know, grab some of this part here and just paint, bring that down. Or again, just paint it on top. And grab some of this color and just paint in the edge. I'm on clone still. Haha, <laughs> that was working well. Paint. And just make it look like the edge of the wing that was there. Let me zoom my mouse. Let's grab a pen. So much easier. Just color it in. So much faster and easier. These are the pen. I love the pen. So here it's a little bit more brown. So let's actually bring that brown color up. Just to kind of clean up that edge a little bit. Then I would reduce my opacity maybe to 50% because I need to blend some of that, or even less, 20%. Just blend some of that color in. Then I would probably just smudge that a bit. So take their smudge brush, just a regular round smudge tool, 40% strength, and just smudge that to get a nice blend. Smudging up that dark color into that direction and you can smudge some of this lighter color down and scrub it kind of back and forth and get a nice fix of it. I think you have seen me use the smudge tool to fix bits um, in the wings like just to kind of the fabric is sort of lumpy in places so if you just take your soft smudge tool even here on the edge where we had the two different types of wings together you can just smooth that out nicely. If you go across to delete lines that you don't want, just back and forth a few times, figure out what direction you need to smear. Some of the other smudge brushes work better than this regular. Let's try even the rough bristle. Nope, not going to be in the wing layer. Get rid of something, go across this way, line across this way. Just smooth those out nicely. Make it look more prettier. Yeah, that rough round bristle is better, it's got a bit of a texture to it. Maybe we can use a bit of that down here. See, it just it kind of grabs nicer. See, I can bring it right over and fix that edge too. So there is a nice big. A bigger wing than what she had so that was her before wing actually here i can show you the before so they were like that and now they are like that so just much more proportionate to the size of her you can also you know tip and warp them if they were bent out of shape you can you can also bend them use the warp tool or the pupper warp puppet warp tool if you needed to bend them but these are nicely sitting on her so we don't need to worry about that so let's move on to some digital wings right so if we wanted to replace these wings with digital wings we are going to need to remove the wings that we have here. Now, there's different ways that you can do this. If by chance you have another copy of your studio that doesn't have the person sitting in front of this area, that's actually a quick way to replace items that you want to do. So if you have this side of your studio from another image that's not covered, you could slide that in here and get it to match the same size and then just kind of brush it in over top. So that's kind of a cool trick too. I always take a few images of my studio before my client comes just so that I have an exact picture of the setup and then I can use that to um, cover over things or change out things that I may want to remove in a photo. That's just a little quick tip on that. We're going to try just doing a content fill on this because I want to see if it might work. I mean, I'm just working on the background layer this time, even though I said I usually duplicate, but because you want to actually get rid of this, if it's duplicated, you're going to see it still from the layer below. Let's see what it does. Sometimes you get really lucky and content fill will see what it'll do for us today. <laughs> now see, we've got a total fail. It grabbed her face. So, not going to do it that way. Let's go in smaller sections then. Sometimes you get a weird, like an eyeball or something. It's kind of humorous sometimes what ends up showing up. So we'll just go into segments. And see, it keeps wanting to grab her face, so it's not liking what we're doing here. 
So we may have to do something different, but let's just try a couple more pieces. That one worked okay. I find that if you have a larger segment that's sort of attached to something else and too close to other stuff, just doing it in pieces, chunks, can work better. I'm going to uh, speed this up and show you, so you don't have to sit here and watch it. All right, I'm not being very successful with this segment, so this might be a case where I'm going to see if I can find another image of her studio session that I can add over top there. Found one, this isn't too bad. I've got a little bit of a piece of a wing on this one showing over the tree that I need, so let's try on this and see if we can content fill. Content aware fill. There we go. So what I'm going to do is grab this that I need with the tree, etc. There's no mushroom in there, but that's okay. I'm going to edit copy, and we'll go back into this one, and paste it in here, and see if we can fudge this to work. So I'm just going to watch the size of the tree over here, get it pretty close, that looks pretty good. You might want to reduce the opacity of it, so you can see where you're lining it up. Zoom in here. Also double check our size needs to be a little bit bigger. That's pretty close, I think. Not quite perfect on the edges there, but that's not going to matter because we're going to just mask it. So if we do that back up and then we can just clear out the edges that we don't need with a mask a brush this is at 20 percent just to get it easy blend basically just getting rid of the edges that i don't need the rest of this is fine I'll go at 100 percent just so i can see where i need to be and then i know what to go back with A little bit funny right there. Let's just turn that on and off. So that's showing me a bit of that. This might be just a slightly different because oh, it's because we cloned out some of the wing, so it grabbed actually grabbed some um, bit from below of this plant was a piece of what it took. So we will just. going to delete a little bit more. Not really the... I'm putting wings over top of this so it's not a huge deal. We can then clone in a little bit here to just make that look a little bit better but that's now the tree is in there right so we don't have to worry about that so much. It looks fine around the hair and stuff. So let's just fix this up a little bit. We'll just do a new layer and clone stamp it a little bit. Again it's going to be under the wings. Some of the brush wings are transparent, so that's why I don't want to have, it matters a little bit what it looks like under here, but like this is just dark down here, so we'll just put in some dark. Grab some of these leaves, just kind of make it look like it's mottled leaves. Could just grab some different patterns from different areas and make it look kind of natural. Okay, that'll do. Okay, so we've now prepared the area. Oh look, we've got to fix this edge too. Um, this was the only main part I need to worry about, so I might actually delete some of this side and see how that will look, because then I can bring back in my mushroom and stuff that I had over there. Back, back. It's a little funky along the, uh, right there, it was doing something weird. Let's clean that back. That will do. So I'm going to show you the two, or the, the brush wings that I like very much, which are from Obsidian Dawn. Go 
brushes you will find in the resource list. They are my favorite brushes that I use when I want to do a just a really soft, pretty digital wing. So um, Obsidian Dot and Wings, there's a few different ones that I like. Um, I usually like to use them on white. You can tint them a little bit or do a color overlay afterwards. Uh, these are some really pretty ones. It's just like a one stamp kind of a deal. You can build, some of them are more transparent than others, but those ones are really pretty. They're not my favorite ones, though. Uh, these ones are also quite pretty. They have um, just some little tendrils and sparkles on them. But the ones that I like the most are these guys. They just, I just love them. They're just absolutely gorgeous. So I will just do a stamp, one, one stamp like that. She has wings on the other side here too that we'll need to remove, but I'm just going to worry about this side right now. Um, so first I'm going to just tip them and kind of get them in place where I think they need to be, and then we can check on their size. So let's just move those in. And with these, you can you know, alter them all different shapes and angles and perspective and things and in fact we'll need to do that depending on how your subject is sitting. These are sitting kind of straight forward, they're not quite the right perspective so we're going to have to do some work with that and I would like the bottom one to look a little smaller than the top one so we might do some warping and things on these to make them look right. Now the first thing I need to fix is because I said they're just sort of, they're straight, they're as if they're on a plain level in front of us. This is if she was completely profiled. This is how you would have these wings. You need to, they need to be tipped back a little bit. And we can do that with the perspective tool. I'm gonna to make them a little bit bigger as well, just because I want nice big wings. You can stretch them this way too. Um, if you just go up and down with these, you can make them however you want. You can make them narrower, depending on what you need. Narrower or bigger, they stretch quite nicely from side to side like that. So you can do all kinds of neat things with them, and I need to tip them. Now they're a little bit too big, so let's down, and maybe just bring them in a little bit. Sort of like that. So here's where they would normally attach, right here. You need to kind of picture where they would be on the back of her dress. And then we're going to go into the perspective tool. That's under transform perspective. Now when you do perspective. So depending on which way you drag them, if you do this, it pushes the back, the, it's pushing this side away from you and this, so this is as if they were turned the other way. So that's not the direction that we want it, that's the opposite the way that we want it. If you pull this way, it's, see how it's, it's pulling it toward us, and that's more of the angle that we need because this part of the wings need to be receding backwards and this needs to be coming forward. You can adjust it further by grabbing the other side, right, and see. You can just, you can get them twisting all different directions of where you might need them just by pulling on these. So that's something you need to kind of fiddle around with and learn, understand what it's doing. I'm just going to reset that to start over again here. So I want these wings tipped. They need to come toward us a bit so that the back part of them are going backwards a little bit. And then that might make them look too big now. So we will just resize them again. So we'll transform and resize to make them a bit smaller again. And now they are on the right angle, or a much better angle, to actually be tucked in behind her there. Kind of like so. So now we're going to need to mask. This is where you could do the uh, little trick with your, you know, where you grab a little piece of of her, the back of her. So I trace along the back where the wings are going to be, kind of like that. Anywhere that they might overlap, you might want to go up her hair a little bit. That went a bit too far. Take that along the hair in the back. It doesn't have to be perfect because we can refine how it's doing. But so now that I've got that selected all around the dress and stuff, it'll make it really easy to slide them in behind. So we're going to go copy paste, copy, paste, like so, move them up, have that up and up. So I now have a perfect selection copy. Then you get a little bit of a funny shift with it. Don't worry about it. You won't see it unless it's in a weird place. Don't worry about it. I don't want it up on this part. I only need it on her back. So those, I'll turn my, those wings on, and now, as you can see, 
I'm going to have way less masking to do because I've just made it so they can go in behind. That also makes it super easy to do shadowing and shading that we're going to need to do because as you see, these are really bright here and she's going to be casting. They're behind her, so her own shadow is going to be on them. We're going to have to tint those in behind there. But we've got this now, which just saves us a bit of masking. You can just, if you don't want to do that, then you just put a mask on these wings and actually erase what you need off of the wings. But, um, you know, just do this instead to the edge. Whichever way you want to do it is fine. But I just wanted to show you that other way because sometimes it just makes it a whole lot faster. So with these, I'm going to just go back in now and go exactly along the edge of her dress. I'm going to actually change how her dress is poofing out here a little bit. I'm not going to worry about like that. Now, one quick way to do a shadow on wings like this is you can actually using the mask if you put your brush at like 10% you can actually erase it. so if it's dark background behind it and you actually just start erasing the wings a little bit that can create a bit of shadow on its own right and show what is behind now because I've blocked off stuff I didn't want that's not going to work as well for me on this one but see how I can just go like this and just sort of shade them by deleting a little bit and it's okay because they're transparent wings if it shows through some stuff but if I don't want that I'm just gonna bring that back a little bit because I don't want it quite that dark because as I said I'm getting rid of I mean I don't want it that see-through because I'm getting rid of some kind of stuff behind them that I don't want so if I want to tint these now that's these kind of wings you are a little more forgiving too for how perfectly you need to have them against I mean obviously do the best job you can with your mask but they're not as critical because they are soft wings to begin with for exactly how close you have them to the subject or how perfect that edge is makes it really nice when you're working with these okay so if i put them back to full strength along the edge of her like that let's do some shadowing on them now Here. I'm just getting rid of the shadow that I had before. Where I had erased them. We're going working full strength. You can go 10% with your brush and just slightly go over the edge of whatever you're putting them up against, and that will just help with blend. You're going to see that when we do uh, background swap outs, etc. This is a little trick that you often will want to do, pretty much always will want to do, to make sure that you have a nice edge on what you're doing. So I need to now shade these. Now there's a couple ways we could do this. There's always many ways that you can do something. So we can just manually shade this now. This would be a case where I would probably just color on black rather than fussing with dodge and burn just because they're white and it would just be easier to paint black. So we're just going to do that at about 10% or maybe 20% opacity. We can just start to add in some shading. I'm not going to worry about, I'm on a new layer for this, which is above them. This is where if you have something like that cutout layer that I was talking about, you can just go like this and it's not going to matter that you're because you're going to be painting underneath. If I turn that layer back on, I've painted underneath. So let's just turn that off. I'm going to just paint where I want it. Darker along right next to her and feathering out. Right? So you go, go big and do kind of the broad and then keep coming back in a little bit lower. I'm doing it stronger than it needs to be and then I'm going to back it off because I just want to be able to see that's kind of what you're going to want, right? It's going to be tapering out as you go out this way. So bigger brush, lower opacity. And see if I put this back over, you can see she, it's shadowing now, right? That's the piece that we cut out. So I can go back and erase against the skin I have, or if I'm using that other piece, see how much easier that is? They need to be lowered now, lower the opacity. So I would like to take it right off and then start building it, bring it back on until it looks like the appropriate amount of shadow, probably something like that, is what you want. You can try changing the blend mode to maybe soft light. That's another uh, 
shadow mode on this in this case it doesn't work it's not strong enough I don't like that so I'm just gonna leave it on normal and turn it down a little bit that can always be adjusted later if we feel it's not strong enough so that's how you do a sort of a shadow like that but if I turn off that shadow the wings look stupid I'm sorry they look stupid and that's a mistake I often see people do when they're adding in wings, is you just stick them in and you don't do any shading on them. If you want it to look realistic, you need to shade them, because she's going to be adding shadow from her onto those wings. Even though they're very transparent, you're going to need to have that. From here, if you wanted to add tint to your wings, sometimes with these kind of wings, because these ones are completely transparent or fairly transparent, I'll add them way at the end of the whole uh, edit because that way they're going to show through anything that's in behind them this way if I didn't like this anything I put over top is going to go over top of them which is not a big deal that's fine um, but sometimes it's nice to just put them in on the end too and then you can just reduce their opacity if you want to more or less of your background showing so it's kind of up to you which way you do it if I'm piecing you know as I'm teaching you that I like to piece everything together I'll usually do them first but it's not a big deal if you're adding wings like this in because they are so easy to work with and just stamp them in and it doesn't really matter when you do them. Now you can tint these wings as well if you want to double click and go into your blending modes um, you can add color to them. You can do a color overlay on these which is something I will sometimes do. Um, pick a color like maybe I want to tint them with kind of a red. Oops I'm just on my shadow layer which is kind of fun. That's not what I want to do cancel. We want to be on the wing layer, which is this one. Yes. So let's double click that one. Color overlay. And let's say we want to pick the red from her dress. Sorry, we'll just leave it on normal. Because they're white, we don't want to worry about it being other colors. So I can add a little tint of red into that. That's one way to do it. Another way you can do the shadowing, I just want to show you, is normally you would double click your layer and you can, not normally, just, you can double click and go into the layer styles and do a radial gradient overlay. But I'll just show you using an adjustment layer because I need to be able to clip it to this. If we do a gradient and we go a bit small, like so, even smaller. So we just have a little circle, a little bigger, and see how I can bring it, because it's going from black to out to transparent, I've got a nice gradient that's already happening, you don't have to worry about drawing that in, so you just slide this to be where you need that shadow to be, I need to be a touch bigger, kind of like that. So we're going to clip it to the layer. There. So this now gradient, you can see we can slide that exactly where we need and that will do that blending out for you rather than having to paint it in. So just put it in kind of like that. If you need to reduce the opacity you can a little bit, but we want it probably about that dark. So that's just another quick way. That circle in black can give you that nice blend without having to paint it in. That's another little trick for you. Okay, let's look at some pre-made wings. This is a set from Wolverine. You'll find him in the resources list. These are ones that I really like that he has done. And they're perfectly cut out because they're kind of, they're not cut out, they're painted. So they're already excellent edges, etc. So I'm going to drop those in. They're just little, so I'm going to make them bigger. Again, you can stretch these out to be the shape that you want. Quite simply, and we're going to have to flip them. And then just like we did with the other wings, then we would place them in, do any rotating or whatever for size. You can do that same thing, either masking them off and or doing the copy over top and then just, I'll just do them super fast here. I won't make them perfect. Let's go past a little bit and then come back and fix that edge. Bring it in. 
really low opacity, that little bit of it come over, just to make that transition look better. And then again, you're going to want to do that shadowing on them. These are not a good color, so we're going to need to adjust the hue on those to make them look much better. So slide your hue around, maybe I want to bring in some reds and purples. Um, so just bring that back and forth. Maybe you want them. You could do fall fairy with fall shirt colors like that. That's actually kind of pretty. Or we could do, you know, red and purple is fun together. Red and pink. Ah, let's leave them like that. Play with your saturation. Maybe they're a little bit too bright. Something like that. Check your lightness and darkness. That's kind of like contrast again, right? This is too dark. This is too ghosty. Something kind of like that makes them match fairly nicely. And then you'll need to do your shadow again to make those look proper. They're a little bit weird shape here. Let's bring them in a little bit. Just kind of move them around, get them in, get them in the right place where you need them. Do that shadow on them again. You can just paint like we did right over top. New layer. Paint on with the black or do that radial gradient like I showed you. And she's just going to need that bit of shadowing here to make them darker in behind. Turn it down. And if you've done it the way that I did it, you can just erase off of her. Or do that gradient thing. These are more, um, because there's more to these wings with color and stuff, you won't have to do as much shading as perfectly on those ones, but you definitely need to have that little bit of shadow in behind there. Then you can, you know, adjust there. You need to go back and adjust the lightness a little bit more, bring them up a bit. You can still dodge and burn these afterwards. This is They're actually shadowed quite nicely themselves, but you might want to add a little touch of where the light would be touching on um, the different places. Your light is coming this way, right? And we'll, we'll do that when we're doing finishing touches with light and putting stuff in. But you're going to do... I'll just show you where you need to put the... My light is coming from here, right? This is where I light, so you can, that's where, anywhere that that's sort of touching along the front, so, you know, the tips, just sort of the tips here where the light would be touching. You want to have a little bit of light moving in on those little doodads up there, and maybe a little bit over here that would be sticking out past her. It wouldn't be behind her, but maybe little bits here would be, need little touches of light. So there we have wings, three different types of wings how to make them larger, how to manipulate them. Oh, I should show you how to do a little bit of manipulating. If you needed to change these to be a um, different shape because they didn't look funny, play around with the warp tool. Warp. So you can bring them in. You can maybe you want them bent a little bit. So you can shape them however you want using the warp, warp tool just to make them look exactly the shape that you want them to be. Okay. Fair.